Well, greetings viewers and voyeurs, you're with Got That Funk. And I'd like to talk in this video about sex, sexuality, and children. But it's not as dodgy as it sounds. Basically, I want to ask a couple of questions and encourage video responses, although, of course, text comments are just as welcome. The question for those of you who have never had children is, did your parents ever discuss the facts of life with you when you were growing up? The birds and the bees, sex and sexuality, reproduction and pregnancy, any of that. Did they ever sit you down and tell you what's what? If they did, I would like you to tell me, first of all, how old were you? And second of all, what was the nature of the conversation? I mean, did they have like a little lecture that they had been cooking up in their head that they sat down and gave you? Or was the conversation the result of questions that you were asking? You know, like, how did you get pregnant, mom? Or something like that. Please let me know. I'm very interested to find out. The second question is for those of you who are uh, got children yourself. If you have children, do you intend to personally sit your children down and talk to them about sex and sexuality? Have you already done so? Whichever way, if your kids are too young or whatever, or if you've already done so, how old do you think kids ought to be before you have this conversation? Do you think the conversation should be, you know, a one-off or would you have several conversations with them as they're growing up? Now, I'm going to tell you the answers to those questions myself for me um, because I think it's important to, if I'm going to initiate this conversation, to let you know where I'm coming from. Okay, so first of all, this first part is pretty embarrassing for me really. It's uh, true though and it will illuminate the second answer if I tell you the answer to the first part. Well, I was seven years old when my mom first told me about uh, the birds and the bees. My sister was six, and the reason she told us was because in the spring of 1970, my mom fell pregnant with my younger brother, who was born in January the following year. And so she sat my sister and me down to tell us that she was pregnant and to explain to us that she would be going through some changes, that she would be getting sick for no reason for a while, that she would her stomach would start to get bigger and bigger and bigger because there would be a baby growing in there. And the bigger her stomach got, the less things that she would be able to do around the house and the more help she would be needing around the house, you know, getting the chores done and so forth. Now, I'm sure that was probably all she really wanted to say, but of course, me being Mr. Curious, I piped in and said, Mom, how did the baby get into your stomach in the first place? So my mom reluctantly seemed to explain that, uh, you know, when Mommy and Daddy are in bed together, and I'm going to give this to you as close to the way she explained it as possible, but of course it's not verbatim. We're working on 40 plus years of memory here, so, you know, this is just the bare bones of what I can remember. But what she said to me was something along the lines of, well, mommy and daddy sleep together, and sometimes daddy loves mommy very much. And, well, some stuff comes out of his penis, but it's not like he's wetting the bed. This stuff isn't urine, you see. It's called semen. And semen's this kind of gooey stuff that comes out of a man's penis uh, when he loves a woman. And it gets up inside your mom, and what it, semen's full of these little soldiers called sperm, which look like polywogs. Uh, for those of you who don't know, polywogs are tadpoles, you know, uh, frog spawn. Um, and yeah, that's my dialect for it anyway, polywogs. This is what my mom said. So yeah, they look like polywogs, but they're much, much smaller than real polywogs, you know. And, and they're in the semen. And it, it gets up inside your mummy. And mommy's got a egg waiting inside her tummy for the semen. And uh, for the sperm, rather. And one of the sperm will get inside the egg, and that's what makes a baby. Okay, well, I thought that I completely comprehended what my mom said, and therefore I didn't ask any more questions about it. Fast forward four and a half years. I was 12 years old, beautiful summer day, me and my best friend Berkeley walking up to my granddad's to go swimming in the swimming pool. And uh, we're having a chat about this and that, as you do. And I remember saying, it must be really horrible being born because you've got to clean all the shit off the baby. It was a horrible way to be born, to have to go past all that shit. And Burke was like, what are you talking about? When babies are born, they're a bit bloody, but they don't have any shit on them. 
and I explained to Berkeley that there's got to be some shit resting in the bowels and you must have to pass that up when you're born. And Burke starts laughing at me. He's like, Paul, babies aren't born out the asshole. They're born out the cunt. His word, not mine. And um, I'm like, don't be stupid. Babies are in the stomach. And, you know, when you eat food, Berkeley, it goes into your stomach and comes out your asshole. So babies are being in the stomach. Of course they come out the asshole. Duh. Now, at this point, I had already been masturbating for some time. So I knew that when you masturbate, you have an orgasm. But I didn't know that what came out during the orgasm was this semen stuff my mom had been talking about from years before. I didn't know, man. And so Burks explained to me, he said, Paul, don't you realize that when you fuck a girl, you put your dick up her cunt, right? And I was like, yeah, I know that, duh, don't be stupid. He goes, and when you come, that's what gets a girl pregnant. And I'm like, really? Like that. And then at this point, Berkeley was in fucking hysterics, okay? Now, you see, the problem is that my mom probably used all those euphemisms that she used because she thought she was trying to make it understandable for kids who were six and seven years old. What she hadn't factored into the equation was that having a very analytical mind like I did, I took everything she said literally. So, you know, I basically thought that the man and woman laid in this puddle of semen and that some of it just naturally seeped up into my mom's butt and it got up into the stomach and impregnated this egg. That's what I thought. I thought I understood it completely. You can imagine how embarrassed I was when Berkeley set me straight, man. It was pretty fucking embarrassing. Anyway, so I resolved as a result of that extraordinary embarrassment um, to make sure that when I had kids, man, I was going to tell them about the birds and the bees and I was going to give it to them straight, man. I was going to tell them the facts as bluntly as possible. I'm a big fan, by the way, of candor. Um, I have always been an incredibly blunt person in real life. And as regards to telling my kids the facts of life, I told my kids about it when they were a lot younger than you might think would be appropriate. But I think it's important to, if kids, no matter what questions kids ask, I really feel strongly as a parent that if a child is old enough to ask a question, if they are sophisticated enough to formulate a sophisticated question, they deserve a true answer to their question, although you might have to tailor the answer for their level of intellectual development, depending on how old they are when they ask the question. But whatever they get is the truth. You have to answer them with the truth, and you have to give them an answer. There's no, it's no good saying, I'll tell you when you're older. That's a cop-out, and frankly, it, in my opinion, puts a wedge between you and your kids when you need to make sure your kids are always on your side so that they know you're always on their side. Anyway, so my kids and, my, uh, and their mother split up when my kids were two and three years old, respectively. And about nine months later, she became pregnant with uh, her, second, her new guy's baby. So she told my kids that she was pregnant. But because I was the one who had custody, my kids always asked me anything they wanted to know. And my daughter, who's the older of the two, asked me, so how did mommy get pregnant? She says mummy because she's British. But she said, how did mummy get pregnant? So I explained to her that mummy and Phil had had sex. And what sex is, is when a man and woman uh, feel strongly about each other, they oftentimes will have sex. And what sex is, is a man and a woman putting their privates together, a man's penis and a woman's fanny. And they move it around a little bit because it feels very nice. And that's how women get pregnant. I didn't at that point feel it necessary to explain about ejaculation, not at that point, but I did feel it was necessary to talk about genital contact and that the genital contact was what results in pregnancy. Those are the things I wanted to make sure I discussed. And I didn't have to talk to my son about it at that point. I just talked to my daughter about it at that point and she was just barely four years old at this point. About a year later, when my son was four my daughter was five, I got the movie uh, Four Weddings and a Funeral. Now, if you're not familiar with the movie, there's a sex scene in the movie. But it's perfectly fine for little kids to see it because there's no naughty bits being shown. The people having sex are wearing all their clothes and there's virtually no exposed skin whatsoever. Um, she's on top of him and what happens is there's a guy in a bedroom hiding from someone and 
it's dark, and he has to hide in the closet because this newlywed couple comes in to have sex. And so she's on top of him in her wedding dress, and you can see that they're moving around a bit, and you can see the ridiculous looks on their faces and the ridiculous sounds that they're making. And Charles, the guy hiding in the closet, is looking all embarrassed and so forth. And so I explained to my kids that, you know, most people don't want to be around when other people are having sex because they do make really weird sounds and they do make really strange expressions. And look at those faces. Would you want other people to see you with those expressions? And would you want other people to hear you making those sounds? We laughed about it. And no, of course, was the answer. And so that was my kid's first sort of visual understanding of what sex might possibly look like. And we discussed, you know, the mechanics of sex a bit more as a result of watching this movie. Now, some people might think it's inappropriate for me to let my kids at the ages of three and four, or sorry, four and five, watch that movie. And I would agree if we didn't discuss it. But I really feel that, you know, the certificates they put on movies are fine for entry into a cinema. But if you're going to watch movies with your children at home, you can be the judge of what a movie is appropriate or not appropriate for your own kids. You know, the number on the sticker, be damned. It doesn't really matter. And I really feel strongly that if you're going to discuss things with your kids when they come up in movies, it's okay to let them watch movies that have scenes which might have language or, or depictions which you might otherwise think would be inappropriate. They would be inappropriate if your kid was just going to watch them and any questions that came to their mind couldn't be answered. However, like I say, I thought it was a good vehicle to use to bring it up with my son, who I hadn't really had the conversation with yet, and to just give them a little bit more of a sort of, of a visual idea about what sex was about, what it looked like, and there's nothing to be afraid of. Now, the reason I think it's important to talk to the kids as young as possible about this type of thing myself is because, number one, my daughter was only four years old when she first asked me the question. So, you know, the, the, the mind is already starting to work. Number two, when it comes to movies and TV shows, children, even from a very young age, will pick up the fact that for grown-ups, sex is pretty fucking important because it is talked about an awful lot or alluded to an awful lot in TV shows and in movies. And so being as how it's so obviously important, it would seem really, really strange not to mention it to children since it seems so important to adults. Kids are definitely going to be curious about why it's so important. Why are we making such a big deal about it? And so on. This is why I thought it was important to talk to them about it as young as I did. But a lot of parents don't think that, um, that that's appropriate. They think that you should wait for kids to be a little bit older. Frankly, I think that when kids are small, if you discuss it with them in a candid manner and you're not overblowing it, you're just being matter of fact about it, it's not going to really gross them out. It didn't seem to gross my kids out anyways. Um, but my kids were never bit brought up to be sort of body shy or, or to be embarrassed about, you know, things that other people might seem to be embarrassed about. Not by me anyway. So that's how I approached it with my kids. How did you approach it with yours? Or how will you approach it with yours if you haven't had kids yet? And also, don't forget the other part of the question. If you had the conversation with your parents, how did that come about? What did they say? And how old were you when it happened? Okay? I would love to see a robust discussion. Videos would be appreciated, but comments are just as well appreciated. Until next time, thanks for watching, and may all your ups and downs be ups.